In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as the disciples were waiting for the gift of the Holy Spirit at the Cenacle, it is Our Lady who accompanied them in prayer. And so in this Eucharist, as we await for the solemnity of the Pentecost, let us also allow Mary to accompany us in our prayer and meditations. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, as the Blessed Virgin was at prayer with the Apostles, you poured out on her in abundance the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Grant through her intercession that we too, being filled with the same Spirit, may persevere with one mind in prayer and bring to the world around us the good news of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had gathered, he said to them, My brothers, although I had done nothing against our people or our ancestral customs, I was handed over to the Romans as a prisoner from Jerusalem. After trying my case, the Romans wanted to release me because they found nothing against me deserving the death penalty. But when the Jews objected, I was obliged to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no accusation to make against my own nation. This is the reason, then, I have requested to see you and to speak with you. For it is on account of the hope of Israel that I wear these chains. He remained for two full years in his lodgings. He received all who came to him, and with complete assurance and without hindrance, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His searching glance is on mankind. 
The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord searches the just and the wicked. The lover of violence, he hates. For the Lord is just, he loves just deeds. The upright shall see his face. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. Please stand. I will send to you the Spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter turned and saw the disciple following whom Jesus loved, the one who had also reclined upon his chest during the supper, and had said, Master, who is the one who will betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, What if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? You follow me. So the word spread among the brothers, that that disciple would not die. But Jesus had not told him that he would not die. Just, what if I want to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? It is this disciple who testifies to these things and has written them. And we know that his testimony is true. There are also many other things that Jesus did. But if these were to be described individually, I do not think the whole world would contain the books that would be written. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, the question of Jesus to Peter is this. What concern is it of yours? My dear brothers and sisters, what are your concerns today? Ano ang mga alalahanin na bumabagabag sa isip mo ngayon? Madalas, mga kapatid, itong mga concerns na ito, they trouble us. These concerns that we have, instead of allowing us to focus, they distract us. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is teaching us today through his question to Peter. Do not let your concerns distract you from one truth. And that truth is that you are loved by God. That is why in the gospel today, we are reminded that the one who wrote this gospel 
was not named. He was just called the one beloved by Jesus. The beloved disciple. Many times, my dear brothers and sisters, our concerns distract us from the truth that God loves us. Yung mga alalahanin natin dahil nag-aalala tayo sa mga concerns na yan, iniisip tuloy natin, mahal ba ako ng Diyos? They distract us from the truth that God indeed loves us, that we are beloved by God. I will be transferring to a new mission very soon. Kaya ngayon pa lang ay nagsisimula na akong magligpit at mag-impake ng aking mga gamit. At kasama na rin dyan ang alalahanin ano ang mga kakailanganin ko naman pagpunta ko sa bago kong misyon. Kaya imbis na makafocus ako sa aking misyon, nakafocus ako sa pag-aalala. Kaya minsan tuloy, imbis na ikaw ay makatutok sa paghahanda ng iyong puso sa bagong misyon, nakatutok ka sa pag-aalala, natatakot ka tuloy minsan at nakakalimutan mo nang ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa iyo. My dear brothers and sisters, let not our concerns distract us from the love of God. We see another beautiful example in our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles. We see St. Paul being accused by the Jews at that time and therefore, he was imprisoned because of their accusation. And my dear brothers and sisters, whenever we are accused of something, what do we want to do? We want to fight back, to fight the accusation and prove that we are right and they are wrong. But when we are focused on that thing, on just proving that we are right, we forget the love of God. And we forget to the mission to spread the love of God. That is why St. Paul was a beautiful example. Even if he was accused, he did not forget the most important thing, and that is to focus on the love of God and to focus on the spreading of the love of God. St. Paul said in our first reading, You accuse me, I will not accuse you. Instead, I will give you the love of God. Madalas mga kapatid, Kapag nakikipagtalo tayo, ang focus mo palagi ay ang patunayan na tama ka. Pero sa kagustuhan mong patunayan na ikaw ang tama, nakakalimutan mo ng magmahal. Di bali nang awayin mo ang kapwa, di bali nang ipahiya mo ang kapwa, basta mapatunayan mong tama Sometimes proving ourselves to be right distracts us from the truth of God's love and from spreading God's love to others. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are nearing the solemnity of the Pentecost. And it was Our Lady our Mother Mary, who accompanied the disciples in prayer at the cenacle at the upper room where Mary taught the disciples 
not to distract themselves because of their fears and worries, but through prayer, focus ourselves on the love of the Spirit given to us. Mga minamahal na kapatid, sigurado po ako, marami sa atin dito, hindi lang ako ang may mga alalahanin. Sigurado akong kayo na nandito o yung mga nanonood ng online mass na ito, marami tayong mga inaalala sa buhay. Nawa ang mga alalahanin na ito ay huwag magturo sa atin na hindi ka mahal ng Diyos. Bagkus nawa sa tulong ng panalangin, sa tulong ni Maria na nagtuturo din sa atin paano manalangin. Alisin lahat ang pangamba ng mga alalakanin at tayo ay mag-focus. Itoon ang ating mga sarili sa pagmamahal ng Diyos na kahit kailan ay hindi magmamaliw. Amen. Please stand. Jesus, who himself came to people as a servant in obedience to his Father, wants us to keep God's interests above all things. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church may be true servants acting with the same concern that Christ showed to his apostles, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders may be faithful to their commitments and fulfill their duties in the spirit of love and service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who experience difficulties may receive strength from the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may realize that their suffering, undertaken in union with Christ, can be turned into blessing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That deceased relatives and friends may enjoy the peace in God's eternal home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, your Son placed your interest above all else, even to the extent of suffering for humankind. Grant that we may always honor Him by making Him most important in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please all stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. All Holy Father, receive these gifts from joyful hearts and grant that we may follow closely the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary by obeying the voice of the Spirit and seeking to praise your glory in all things. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. How wonderful is the example you have given us of harmony and prayer in the church at its beginning. You show us the mother of Jesus as she prays with the apostles in oneness of mind and heart. She who waited in prayer for the coming of Christ is still at prayer as she calls upon the promised paraclete. She who was overshadowed by the Spirit at the incarnation of the Word, is once more filled with your gift from on high at the birth of God's new people. As she keeps vigil in prayer, her heart on fire with love, she is the model of the Church, enriched by the gifts of the Spirit and keeping watch for the second coming of Christ. Through him, the angels of heaven offer their prayer of adoration as they rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices be one with theirs in their triumphant hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please stand. Let us pray. Lord God, you have fed your holy people with the one bread of life. Renew us by the one gift of the Holy Spirit and grant that under the protection of the Blessed Virgin, we may work for the unity and peace 
of all those for whom your Son offered himself as the sacrifice of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will celebrate tomorrow, Pentecost Sunday, the conclusion of the Easter season. Our Masses here at the Cathedral will be at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 6 p.m. Also during the 10 a.m. Mass tomorrow, Sunday, we will be welcoming the pilgrims and devotees of the canonically crowned image of Our Lady of the Abandoned of Muntinlupa. We also welcome the original image recently canon canonically crowned by the papal nuncio to visit here at the Manila Cathedral. And we welcome also their parish priest, Father Jonathan Cadiz, together with their parishioners and all the devotees. We invite everyone to join us tomorrow in celebration of Pentecost Sunday, the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church and to all the disciples. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.